What's up everybody? Welcome back to episode three of Penjin Chat. I named it Penjin. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. I'm not attached to that name or do I even really like it. You know, it's like pen, engine, I don't know. It's really hard to merge fountain pens and cars together. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about how to choose a fountain pen. And it's not just a topic for new people either. This is a topic that really anyone that has been using fountain pens for even like 10 years might face. How do you choose a fountain pen? I get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions uh, coming at me for how to choose a fountain pen, whether it's a $20 fountain pen or they're debating between like, you know, four or five different $500 pens. Um, you know, the, the choice remains the same. And that's simply because we don't have very many pen shops. If you're not in a major city, all you have to go on is videos like this um, and, you know, like people's websites, like retailers' websites, um, because you're forced to buy pens online you can't try them out beforehand and it's difficult you've got to do a lot of research beforehand um, so most of the time what I tell people um, you know whether they're spending you know their first 20 bucks on a pilot metropolitan or whether they're gonna be spending you know $800 on whatever pen um, most of the time what I tell them is go with your gut because instantly you're gonna have a feeling that you're gonna like one pen over the other Two, try and find some like comparable options. So if you're looking specifically for, um, you know, like a Pilot Custom 823 versus like a Pelican M600 or something like that. Um, now, of course, it's differently priced, but uh, you know, like, have you ever used a Pilot pen in general before? Have you ever used a Pelican pen in general before? Do you like whiter, um, not whiter, <laughs> Do you like wetter writing pens or do you like drier? Do you like finer versus, you know, like broad? So narrow down those choices first because that's going to narrow down, um, you know, your, your ability to choose. And of course, you know, do you want piston? Do you want cartridge? Do you want, you know, like bladder fill? Like there's, there's all kinds of filling mechanisms even. So when you have it narrowed down to one or two, maybe three choices, then that is where you're sort of uh, going on gut instinct, right? So what I like to tell people is if you are buying, uh, you know, in Toronto, let's say, um, and you have the ability to get to a pen store, you know, do it. Make the time to go to that pen store and try it out. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy it at the pen store if it's significantly more expensive, um, you know, and you found it a, a good deal on it somewhere else. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy it there, but it means you get to try it um, and you have first-hand experience for what you want. I do recommend purchasing from a local spot, not only to... Okay, so the camera stopped recording, so I pulled over so that I'm not breaking any distracted driving laws. Uh, to turn it back on, but because this is a GoPro, <laughs> uh, I don't know, uh, I can't check the footage to see where it cut out from. Basically what I was rambling on about for a little while, and I'm assuming this is gonna be roughly where it cut out, is uh, buy local if you can, uh, because it will give you the ability to have a good return uh, policy and or exchange so if you love the pen um, but you don't love the experience that you've been having with a nib like if it's you know kind of scratchy or misaligned or anything like that you have a good relationship uh, with your um, pen shop or your, your local pen store now a lot of people won't have that option a lot of people will have to buy online because that's all they have and if you live in Canada, like I do, or anywhere else for that matter, uh, most of the pen uh, retailers are in the US and a few abroad, but the major online ones uh, are in the US. So definitely 
look at their like return policy, their restocking fees. Um, you know, like if you're thinking about getting a pen, but you're a little bit unsure, you're a little bit nervous, email them before. A lot of these places have very good customer service and because they know they're primarily uh, online customer base, they're going to look after you. Um, so email them first, say this is what I'm looking at. You know, what do you suggest out of your experience? Um, you know, they sell these pens, they have very good first-hand experience. So definitely, whoa, construction, okay. They definitely know um, what you're looking for and what you're not. And then even ask them, hey, if I make this choice, if I go with this decision, um, what are, what are your restocking fees? What is, what is my way out? What is my way to the greatest pen that I possibly want? And they're gonna help you out. So to sum it all up, <laughs> basically, don't be scared. Don't be afraid to make a purchase, even a very, very expensive purchase, you know, 800 whatever dollars. Don't be afraid because you're never stuck with it at the end of the day. If you purchase it from a retailer, you typically will end up spending a little bit more, but you have that safety net. If you're purchasing it from another person, um, then that's a different story because typically if you're buying off of somebody else, um, they're not going to take it back. It will be a final sale. Um, so that you may want to put a little bit of more research into, but you're also going to get a little bit more of a deal if you buy it off of somebody than if you were to buy it um, at a retail location. So don't be afraid. Worst case scenario, you buy it off of somebody, you can't return it to them, um, you know, you don't like it. Is it just that you, you know, the, the nib isn't writing exactly the way you want it? Could you potentially send it to a nib tuner? that's a possibility or you could then resell it if you're on Instagram if you go to pen shows uh, you know things like that definitely check out Instagram now there's a virtual pen show there that is a gold mine um, for what a lot of people I have seen do what are you doing um, so don't be afraid that's that's <laughs> the ultimate goal there is don't be afraid just do it you have a gut instinct you know what you want do it um, so guys that's it for me today thank you for watching thank you for sticking along this new journey with me hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so yet already um, new videos are coming out pretty darn frequently and guys I'll see you next time bye